bureaucratic psychology is the only constant in the universe. While the private sector in the world is constantly pushing our society and economy forward, some parts of the public sector are hindering that and somehow can. It's a role in which they performed quite well. To be honest, space may be hard, but bureaucracy is even harder. SpaceX has done everything possible to prepare well for the second Starship launch, and they're moving very quickly, but this is in contrast to the slow pace of the FAA. So, why does the FAA keep stopping Starship orbital flight? How did Elon respond? Is it because this agency operates so ineffectively? Should SpaceX move Starship to somewhere else without hesitation from FAA regulations? Stay tuned as we dive into this and more in today's episode of Alpha Tech. Imagine if the Apollo program had to navigate through modern environmental regulations. The United States might never have sent astronauts to the moon. It's unclear whether the FAA aims to demonstrate this premise, but their licensing timeline is not clearly disclosed. Following the anomaly with Starship's first test flight, the FAA initiated an investigation into the launch incident. After a thorough investigation, the government agency announced its findings on September 8th, detailing 63 corrective actions that SpaceX must undertake before the second Starship test flight. Although SpaceX promptly implemented these corrective actions, the FAA still needs additional time to complete safety assessments before the upcoming flight. There's no specific time frame mentioned, but according to the head of the FAA office, the safety assessment's expected to be completed in October. Well, that's just unexpect. You did not miss here. That's why we're quite concerned about the official launch date of Starship. We also don't know what the next steps will be from the FAA and whether SpaceX has to do more work. This can avoid the outcome of delays, potentially even longer than previous launches. So why does SpaceX need FAA approval? And why does it take so long to approve? The FAA is in charge of regulating all aspects of aviation, from traditional passenger airlines to rocket launches in space. Space vehicles share the same airspace as airliners. The FAA is responsible for making sure everything's carried out safely and that the public's protected. However, the FAA's involvement with air travel is very different from launching rockets. To put it into perspective, the FAA handles around 16.5 million flights per year. In the space world, the number of launches to take place this year is around 50. But now that space tourism is becoming a real thing, this number will start to grow rapidly within the next few years. SpaceX has a plan to operate Starship with hundreds of passengers traveling each day. With the FAA's current rules, this would be impossible. However, nowadays, getting a license isn't a quick process. It can take the FAA up to 180 days to review it. This process involves a huge amount of testing and verification before they can give the all clear. In order to operate a spaceport, the FAA also needs to do intense environmental checks to make sure rocket launches won't destroy or disrupt any nearby wildlife. Even if a license is granted, it only covers that particular rocket for that specific location, assuming that the rocket will follow a similar trajectory for all its launches. If a rocket's to be launched from a different location, a new license is needed. All of this takes a lot of time, and as private space companies continue to make huge advancements, the FAA is starting to fall behind. So how did the FAA hinder SpaceX's launch? Until now, since the FAA got involved in evaluating permits for Starship flights, there have been delays up to five times. The sluggishness of the FAA is most evident in the first orbital launch attempt to Starship. In preparation for the first orbital launch, SpaceX proposed an environmental assessment to the FAA in late 2021. But it wasn't until February 2022 that they initiated the PEA program for Starship. According to their reporting timeline, it was supposed to be published in May 2022, but the FAA postponed it to June of that year. And nearly 10 months later, in April 2023, Starship could finally carry out its launch. The reason given to cover up the FAA's delay is the time-consuming consultations with local authorities or technical issues beyond their control. To be frank, this is due to their cumbersome and unprofessional evaluation process. The PEA assessment could have been completed earlier if the FAA had taken PEA seriously from the beginning. In fact, SpaceX has grown accustomed to the FAA's recurring scenarios since the initial prototype launches a Starship. This has led Elon Musk to express considerable frustration, stating that he was fed up with the FAA. In December 2020, SpaceX was attempting to launch and land their first ever Starship prototype. The FAA had worked with SpaceX and granted them a launch license, but they could only launch under certain weather conditions. Just minutes before SN8 took off, the FAA told SpaceX to cancel the launch. SpaceX employees at Mission Control ignored this message since they thought that the weather was fine and that the FAA inspector didn't have the latest weather info. 
After an impressive launch, SN8 had a hard landing and ended in a massive explosion. Although no one was injured, the FAA was angry that SpaceX had ignored their launch requirements, and they did stipulate that an FAA inspector must be present for every flight of Starship from Boca Chica. The rigorous oversight from regulatory agencies behind the scenes played a role in delaying SpaceX's subsequent testing efforts with Starship SN9. The gleaming 16-story steel rocket was fully fueled and ready for liftoff. However, at that moment, FAA officials were still in the process of reviewing the license for the test as SpaceX had made some changes to its permit application. During that time, Musk expressed extreme frustration with the process, tweeting, Unlike its aircraft division, which is fine, the FAA's space division has a fundamentally broken regulatory structure. The license violation and subsequent license review process have escalated tensions between SpaceX and the world's biggest transportation agency. For years, Musk and others in the space industry have bemoaned the age-old U.S. regulatory framework for launch licensing as innovation and competition in space skyrockets. The delay of this agency is also manifested in the launch of Starship SN11, with a very silly reason as the FAA inspector couldn't make it to the Starbase in time. In the end, one wonders if the FAA truly comprehends the significant importance of SpaceX's Starship and its ability to launch frequently from the Boca Chica location. Or we may pose the question of where Elon Musk could potentially relocate Starship for launches without having to worry about FAA regulatory constraints. To be fair, the role of the FAA is to ensure the public interest is met, and the most visible public interest is to avoid having burning metal falling from the sky. But it's also in the public interest to develop spacecraft systems that actually work well even if the processes may be unorthodox. Considering that SpaceX used this process with the Falcon rockets, and they're probably the most reliable rockets flying today, the unorthodox process has a great deal of merit. You can think of it as a calculated risk on the part of SpaceX. There are primary aspects that they need to test, and then secondary actions that can be tested in the event of success or failure, rather than engaging in analysis paralysis. In sense, we feel this question was asked because of a comment which we made which was along the lines of if the government can't find a way to appreciate the blessing SpaceX is bringing to the U.S., then perhaps SpaceX should unbolt the equipment from the floor and move it to China. Since we were asked to answer this question, we're almost sure this is why we were asked. However, SpaceX can't relocate away from the U.S. because the ITARS regulations would prohibit them from exporting any of their rocket technology. ITARS is the law that prohibits the exportation of technology that could be used for making munitions. In the 1960s, the United States alone had the technology to adjust the thrust of a rocket. For the purposes of the rockets, if your guidance system could adjust to the thrust, then you'd have a much greater control over accuracy. Issues like that were at the forefront of concern during the Cold War, and the technology to prevent the technology from falling into the wrong hands was significant. The Starship platform has largely been discussed in public media and presented on numerous occasions. It has some powerful rocket motors that it uses in large quantities, and it almost certainly has technology that could fall into ITAR's jurisdiction. FAA regulations apply more or less everywhere, but there seems to be some kind of agreement whereby spacecraft can launch from NASA facilities in Florida without any difficulties. So that looks like the most likely place, and indeed, SpaceX is building a rocket factory in the second Starship launch towers there. The idea was that Starbase at Boca Chica, Texas would be doing experimental launches only, and all routine launches would come from the news site. That's all for today's episode. We hope you enjoyed it and learned something new. Please let us know what you think in the comment section below. Your feedback's very important to us and helps us make better videos for you. Thank you so much for watching and see you next time.